Good day, everybody. This is Martin John, and I am here to show, to share with you uh, some Tao of the day. The Tao Te Ching was written in 600 BCE, and I've been working with a translation that I did over the last number of months, and I've been presenting Tao of the day for a little over a year now here on Wisdom. And if you come up and pick a number between 1 and 81, we will explore your Tao for the day. Um, the Tao Te Ching, once again, it is an ancient text and revolves around the idea that um, how can you live a reasonable life? And when you get to live a reasonable life, you don't ask others to change as you have the experiences that you have. Energy Lady, how are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? I am well. I am just... Uh, in, project managing some stuff going on at my sister's house right at the moment so it's a yay it's yeah it's uh it's nice little 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 kind of change of change of scenery for a little while where is she at she's in virginia oh okay how's yeah, the weather so, out there pretty cold uh it's cool now you know it's like it was freezing this morning um and it's gonna get up to like 44 so that's not too bad no that's not bad no, no, no. And um, I've been here for a while. I'm here for a couple more days, then I head back to the Chicagoland area. And how's that weather? Uh, I, as I understand it, it snowed yesterday. Oh, wow. Yeah, so, so that's already happening. Um, so we'll see how that, you know, we'll see. We'll see. I'll get there. And I, I, I just looked it up because it was like pretty chilly um, recently. And I still keep my windows open. Um, in the bedroom just because I like it. You, know. you like to breathe? <laughs> I like to breathe, yeah, you know. So. <laughs> yeah, that's or, what I do. I, when I don't have the windows open, I actually turn the fan on until I can open up the windows. Ah, uh, yeah. Because I like to breathe too. It's a weird yeah. thing, isn't it? It is. Crazy, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, you seem to pop up for me, and I thought, I sat there and I said, do I have a number? And they said, yes, 52. So I said, all right, let's talk to Martin John then. Let's talk about 52. 52 is entitled, Like Tao, So To You. All things issue from Tao. It is their mother. Then, in their own time, they return to Tao. Like Tao, so to you act in the world of manifestation. When you recognize you are the mother of your experience, you can identify the children your actions birth. Loving them as your children, you free yourself of sorrow. Choose not to recognize your motherhood. A victim filled with desire and judgment, there will be no end to your turmoil. Look into the darkness and learn how to yield. Not allowing your senses to guide you, you will find peace in every crevice. Wow. That's pretty broad. Let's break it down because yeah. my brain went, whoa. Yeah, there's a couple things here. So uh, title, like Tao, so to you. So everything that it talks about uh, the Tao doing, it's going to be eventually kind of coming back to us. So this first line kind of comes out. All things issue from Tao, it is their mother. Then in their own time, all the things that issue from Tao return to Tao. So that is sort of like an, an overarching kind of concept that we'll be exploring now. Right. Well, that to me, that's that's the adventure of life, correct? Right. So all things issue from life, all things, you know, like Tao is the space and we as consciousness come into form. So all things issue from us, but even our actions get issued from Tao, right? And that's what we're going to be kind of exploring, this idea that all things, even the things that come from us, are issuing from Tao and will return to Tao, just like us. Like Tao, right. so too you act in the world as manifestation. Tao acts on all levels, in energy and, um, and vibration and all of these things. And we act in the world of manifestation. When you right. recognize you are the mother of your experience, which means all of the experiences that you have, you have birthed. You, you can identify the children your actions birth. 
That means the consequences of your actions and the, the things that you know, you're experiencing today are the children of the actions that you have taken in your life. And the children would be what? The children are like, you know, like if you act, the children are the consequences of that, whether it's positive or negative or however you define it. Those are the, you know, when you identify the children, your actions birth. Now, are the, chi- are the children the results? Well, you could, you could deem it that way. You could look at it in a way it's just like, well, I went shopping and now there's food in the fridge. So that's the result of that. But you may have also gone shopping and had an experience that 30 years down the line, you uh, have had a huge illustrious career that was really uh, subject to something that you did on that shopping trip. You know, and so yes, the results, but they might not be the results as you planned. They might just be like if you allowed yourself to let go and and things happen through that. There are children that get birthed from your actions, like, and they're they're far reaching. They're not just what you plan. Well, yeah. And to me, what I'm hearing is that no matter what I think is going on right now, something's going to show up from my it was from my past that I accepted. And, right. And I get to I get to be with that and just see where it takes me also. Yeah. So like like Tao, so too you act in the world as manifestation. So everything that you put out there will come back in its own time. You can identify the children your actions birth, loving them as your children, you're free from sorrow. So everything that happens to you is happening to you, quote unquote, in this way of being a child from the actions that you have taken in your life. Right. Well, it's it's wherever I go, I am, right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> choose choose to not recognize your motherhood a victim filled with desire and judgment. There will be no end to your turmoil. Right. That that makes total sense to me. So when you are, you know, when we are living in this space, whatever this space happens to be at the moment, and then we, um, we want to say, no, this isn't supposed to happen. It's like, hmm, well, we have to recognize how we, how we are the mother of this in one way or another, how we, we manifested this, how, you know, like whether it's in our thoughts or whether it's in our actions or whether like those are all actions, right? Those are, so we act in the world of manifestation. So we act with our minds and we act with our bodies and we act with our words, all of these things. Right. I like it. Yeah. And then it it finishes up here and says like, look into the darkness and learn how to yield not allowing your senses to guide you, you will find peace in every crevice. Hmm. So, you know, like our senses guide us very often. You know, we are in that space of like, well, like I'm experiencing this right now. Mm -hmm. If we can look into the darkness and learn how to yield and just like not always have to take action, not allowing your senses to guide you, you will find peace in every crevice, peace in every aspect of your life, even if it's painful. Like that's those are those are things that we have to experience. But but they're not. Um, but pain is not peace and pain aren't different things. You can have peace and still be in pain. You can right things can exist together. I will hope so, because otherwise I'm screwed, right? Because <laughs> <laughs> um, I keep telling people, life shows up and life happens. And yes, it's, it does. You know, and it just depends on how we respond to what's in front of us to make it horrible or a blessing. Yeah, that's how we how we define it, and how and and when we can recognize, you know, when when I recognized that my MS was, you know, mine in terms of like, I, I 
created this. It was mm -hmm. a lot easier for me to allow myself to grow from it than mm -hmm. to be held back by it. Right. Which, which makes it, yeah. Cause then that takes away the blame. Right. Yeah. There's no, there was never a time that I was just like, why me? Which is awesome. Yeah. It showed up at the right time. I'm only kidding. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, it did. You know, like it's. No, important. I know, but I'm just. I. I. It was that I was laughing at. You know, just because it's a quote. Um, but no, it's um that actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah. It's, it's and all the, what this is doing for me right now is, um, helping me affirm that, you know, just in my heart, what I've created already is in perfect match to what I'm going through. Mm. And, and I, and I appreciate it because there's a sense of doubt because I don't know if you've experienced this, but when you, when working on a project, there's always one more thing to do, one more thing to do, one more thing to do, one more thing to do. And then there's really nothing to do. And then you're like, Whoa, is it mm. good? And, and I know it is, but, yeah. but now I got to share what, you know, and it's just that it's the apprehension, but it's also excitement at the same time. And what this allowed me to see, you know, just hear and feel is just keep going. You know, I look at these, you know, like I like to do the first line, last line thing. We look at the last line and it says, look into the darkness and learn mm -hmm. how to yield. You know, like looking into the darkness here, I see as being this idea of um, look into the unknown. Like we like to think that we, we know what's going to happen in the future. We like to be assured that there will be a future we like to feel like you know like something uh my the 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 seeds that i've sown will yield fruit right will bear right. Fruit. you know um but when we don't know that and we're not sure and we never are you know like unless we're you know like in a in a position i mean i think everybody kind of doubts that all the time even no matter what position you're in um but you know that's that's looking into the darkness look into the darkness learn how to yield to that unknown not allowing your senses to guide you the senses that are telling you what's going on right now and you will find peace in every crevice and we look at the first line all things issue from Tao. it is their mother then in their own time they return to Tao. Tao isn't worried about when you're going to return. No. You know, you have put it in the world. And we here, you know, in the manifestation wanna see results. We wanna we wanna we wanna Well what what we're actually taught to to expect the results and create the results and set the goals and if you don't see you know, if you don't see it then then it's not real and you know, all that crap. Yeah. You know, yeah. like we, we learn that along the way. And, and, and that's why I think this last section where it says, look into the darkness like that, you know, although it might be innocuous at this point in the piece, it's such an important aspect of like, look into the darkness of you, look into the darkness that, that, that is causing your, you to not have peace, not you personally, I mean, maybe you personally, but like causing one to not have peace look into the darkness and learn how to yield to that allow that to be there it's okay don't allow your senses to guide you be still and experience that at the moment and don't don't let it make you jump to action because in jumping to action that action will birth something that will come back now that if that action is blessed that which will come back will be you know great but if it is if it is done out of mania then you will continue to receive mania no that actually makes sense because i've been asking what it is about my shoulders the last two days i feel like i have a vice on my shoulders and it doesn't make sense and <laughs> you know logically of course and i thought okay well then i'm just gonna do whatever and see what happens yeah you know, because my back and my shoulders um, are very huge indicators of resistance because that's where I've had most of my injuries, which I know you understand with the MS. <laughs> so um, when it comes up, I'm like, I'm holding on to something, you know, in my head. I'm holding yeah. on to something. And the shoulders represent holding on to the world. And so I'm thinking, I'm holding on to something that I'm just going to be. So I sat yeah. down and said, what do I want to do? But if that's that's, to me, looking into the darkness without analyzing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. yeah, no, it's just pretty. Yeah, there's you know. no, there's no, you know, there's, you know, and that idea of like, look into the darkness, learn how to yield, not analyze. It doesn't say look into the darkness and learn how to analyze it. Like, what right. kind of look at it? Like, look into the darkness and yield to it. Just be like, oh, here I am. Right. So in other words, for me, and I love yeah. that, is yeah, yeah. A appreciate the fact that I have shoulder pain. Yeah. I mean, just appreciate it because that makes me alive and, and love That's it. Right. Yeah, don't allow your senses, the feeling of the pain, to guide you into anything because that's not necessarily, that's not real. That's just your senses. All right. So, in other words, I can't fix it. And I just got it's a whole bunch of hugs fix. from Julie. No, but I've got a whole bunch of hugs from Julie and I'm getting hugs from you. So, thank you. I appreciate you. Love you. Very, very much. This was. Thank you so much for joining me. We're going to move on to truly Julie. Oh, it was truly Julie. Hello. Hello, dear. How are you? I'm all right. Are you are you ill still? No. I'm glad. I'm me. <laughs> <laughs> um that took um some experience because I could have sat in being not well for quite a long time yeah. i believe actually it's but it's interesting you know like i've been examining like my like the depth of feeling right the depth of like oh i could stay here in bed or i can get up and i can move and and i'm recognizing that there's very little difference in getting up and moving and staying in bed mm. um you know like in, in and I know that might sound odd, but like, you know, it's like, it's not, I get that completely. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's like, I could be active or I could be still and all, all in all, it's all the same. Absolutely. It's like, still, where, still, you're still there experiencing something. Yeah. And it's like, you know, like I can, I can get out of bed and be still, or I can get out of bed and do something. And, it, and it's interesting how it all just, how, it, how it's all just starting to, you know, collapse on itself almost. Mm. It's very strange, isn't it, to say that, that you can actually be very active and still, still. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> mm -hmm. I've got a number for you. Please. 67. 67. It's a great year. <laughs> 67 is the three lessons. Caught in manifestation, some people say Tao is stupid. Others say it is a beautiful idea, but it cannot be achieved. They cannot see it is neither an idea nor something to be achieved. Lost in a world of endless solutions, they cannot recognize truth. Tao asks us to live with only three things, compassion, moderation, and humility. With compassion, you will be able to care for all things without having to ask if they deserve it. With moderation, you will be able to be generous, generous without needing to prove they are worthy of it. Without them needing to prove they are worthy of it. The hum with humility, you know you are going to die like all things. Thus, you treat all things with dignity and respect. Abandoning these will only lead to trouble. Beautiful. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> what are some of your thoughts? Um, my initial uh, thought is of the beginning of 67, which is kind of telling me that Tao is, it is whether you're doing, staying still, whether you are manifesting or not, it is, Tao just the is, it is. So it, it occurs without any effort yeah. from you. You don't have to try to live in the Tao. You are already living in Tao. Yeah. You know, this line, this last line of this first section, lost in a world of endless solutions, 
things. They cannot recognize truth. Mm. You know, like, they are lost in a world of endless solutions. Solutions to what? Solutions to everything, right? Like, we have solved all of the problems of life, right? Like, we have water flowing into our homes, and we even have it in our refrigerator, so it's cold as soon as we get it, and we have, we have like, all of the modern, like, comforts of all of the stuff. And mm -hmm. we have all of these solutions lost in a world of endless solutions. They cannot recognize truth. They cannot recognize that, like, being comfortable is not honest. Being comfortable is not true. It could be, I mean, for a moment, but it's not like that's not the goal, right? That's not the purpose that we're here to be comfortable, to be, to have everything that we ever wanted, to mm. just, you know, like that's not what is here. Like there's nothing wrong with having those things, but so many of these solutions aren't even appreciated by those who have them. Mm. Yep. You know, it's like, amazing, isn't it, to be able yeah. to um, be observant to mm -hmm. that. You know, yeah. like be observant to, 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 to pause, to be observant and to be still. Like caught in manifestation, some people say Tao is stupid. Others say it's a beautiful idea, but it cannot be achieved. They cannot see that it is neither an idea nor something to be achieved. They are lost in a world of endless solutions and cannot recognize truth. It's there within them, always, mm. always has been. And, and like they just, they can't see it because of all of the solutions around them, right? Like the internet and, and everything else. Everything is to like solve a problem, but to, <laughs> but to embrace your problems, not as problems, but as what is in front of you almost unfathomable yeah it's quite nice not knowing isn't it i actually yeah. enjoy not knowing yeah it's um it kind of brings me to um when we try something new we have that lovely kind of not knowing and then we get to know we get to you know be educated or whatever we get to get to grips with a thing and then we realize that beyond that thing there's another thing we need to get to grips with and then so it's forever going on and on and on you'll always never know all of it yeah so just not knowing is a great space to be it's a it's a space that is all ready to be filled filled or continually continually filled never ever full forever flowing and i think that's the thing about observance is things are always changing so i'll never know everything and i'm kind of content with that <laughs> you know I, I i i think that's that's exactly what we're going for here because like as that section wraps up we move into this really there's sort of a jarring shift here we start recognizing so we first start to identify two different types of people right the people who say Tao is stupid and they just dismiss it from the off others say it's a beautiful idea but it can't be achieved they can't see that it's neither an, something to achieve nor something to uh, nor just an idea lost in a world of endless solutions the manifestation lost in manifestation they cannot recognize truth now we move into this interesting thing of like, Tao asks us to live with only three things, compassion, moderation, and humility. And it doesn't say anything about like being poor or being nice or being, you know, it just says compassion, moderation, and humility. And I think we've lost all of these in, in our sort of social media driven world, right? Like humility is something that we can bring to the table as just being humble and not knowing, like you're saying. Mm. Moderation in everything that we have and do. Moderation in what we eat, 
moderation who we how much we talk how much we're still how much we work how much money we have how many things we have moderation across the board and compassion across the board not only for people but animals and the planet as well mm. it's like and that's where like this endless solutions a world of endless solutions and we are always searching for solutions to some problem like oh and then then the world tells us how about new problems that we haven't even thought of and they have solutions <laughs> yeah. already for it <laughs> absolutely <laughs> you know and and as this one kind of moves into the last section of like with compassion you will be able to care for all things without having to ask if they deserve it yeah it's not our place to uh, decide whether things or people or situations deserve that's not our place to do that right it's not our you know it, it puts us above mm -hmm. it puts us in a position of um pedestalism really i suppose you might call it saying yeah. that yes i can decide to be compassionate to you because you deserve it that's right how rude <laughs> isn't it yes. like you know i mean i'm coming from addiction as you know and and like all of the moral argument around addiction it's like mm. oh well you don't deserve my compassion and tough love and all of this kind of stuff it's like Compassion is going to look differently from moment to moment, but always yeah. having compassion is what is being asked of us. And yeah. you don't have to ask if they deserve it. You're just, you're compassionate. It's not about the other person. Yeah. With moderation, you will be able to be generous without needing them to prove that they're worthy of it. Mm. Because you're being moderate. You're living in moderation. You're living in a way that says, well, I don't need to have so much. And so when you want new things, you know, like my sister has a, or at least she had a, um, you know, a rule for the house that was, oh, well, if you get something new, then you get rid of something old. Mm. You know, that way, you know, she can maintain how many things in her house. Now, not necessarily the case anymore, but but that's still. <laughs> she turned into a hoarder. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm yes. joking. But, but but that's the thing. Without them needing to prove they're worthy of it, you can be generous because you are living with moderation. It's about you. It's not about them. Mm. Yeah. And I you, think this is the real core of it, isn't it? It is, it is a, you know, it is about the self. Yeah, really. your actions are about you. Yeah. Like you're being compassionate, whether or not the person you're being compassionate to deserves it. You're not going to say, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a fool if I'm compassionate to them because they don't deserve it. Mm. Well, well, now you're thinking about being a fool, which means that you're taking into consideration other people's ideas of who you are before yes. you're being compassionate. But the thing that we're being asked to do on this in this world, in this life, is be compassionate and live with moderation and with humility. With humility, you know you're going to die like all things. Absolutely. Equilibrium, as I put it. Yes, thus you treat all things with dignity and respect. And if we look out at the world, too many people today, I think, think they're not going to die. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, there's a good point to that, is I think we all plant a seed of hopefulness to exist beyond this experience we're having. Yeah. There's a real need there for people to have that little line of hope that they're not going to die yeah you know but the fact is is we were born from somewhere no one was around when we did that we did right. that all on our own mm -hmm. and we're going to die exactly the same way all on our own yes 
and and once you kind of accept that that is where it is and when it happens is when it happens i think you can have a little bit more humility about yourself and more compassion and more yeah. moderation yeah. And you can be here in this moment because and as this the last line of this abandoning these will only lead to trouble yep you know and when I look at that in the first line, which is caught in manifestation, people say Tao is stupid. And I think that can happen really easily when you're like, I'm going to die. Well, that's just stupid. Like, well, it's stupid to think about that. I don't want to think about that. And you just push things away and you just dismiss it. Mm. <clears throat> I think once you watch a few people die, you get to know that. <laughs> That's yeah. what's going to happen to me. And during those times when I've been there with people, I've shown compassion. Come back up. Um, although you've shown compassion and humility. Um, a, a mic drop, but we'll <laughs> keep you. you. Yeah. And that's, that's, death is such a beautiful part of life. It is. Um personally from my point of view it's been an honor to be able to be present and walk that last bit of the path with another human being and i think when you walk that path with another human being with their permission mm -hmm. and you show all of those things compassion humility and moderation it's very yeah. important it helps another human being that you're sitting next to to take that journey peacefully gives yeah. them peace gives me peace and it just shows me um really the magic of this experience that we are having yeah it's, it's an important aspect to go away you know to die i think that's we look at this we look at the world and i think we can get caught up and in, in the manifestation as we as we spoke about caught in manifestation people say Tao is stupid why because we're saying that you're not important you are of course <laughs> i mean of course you're important and you're special just like everybody else but there is everybody else as well. absolutely yeah i love yeah. that i i do that quite often as i go from um being uh, feeling my own essence inside myself to then being in the room that i'm in which is on a boat and then i go out from that to being on the river and there's many other boats and then i go from there and so on and so on so country then the planet and you just get really involved in minimalizing yourself to this tiny tiny microscopic nanoscopic speck <laughs> yeah <laughs> that is important that you're there sure but in the, in the in the grand scheme you know it's always good to remember i like to look at it in this way of like you know like there's a leaf on a tree that no one's ever noticed but if it wasn't there the world would be different absolutely you know and i think that i think that of each and every one of us right like and and it's important that those who are caught in manifestation and say Tao is stupid that's okay and others and others that say it's a beautiful idea but can't be achieved they are still caught in manifestation but at least at least they're in a place where they're not saying it's stupid <laughs> <laughs> they are part of the whole which yeah. is what we are getting to here is yeah. no matter what they are still part of the Tao. they have a necessity to be they have a necessity they have their place to be with their ideas and their perception it's all beautifully intrinsically as it should be mm -hmm. that's what's so lovely about it that and no matter on what that tree yeah no every leaf on that tree is is absolute precision 
That's right. Yeah. And no matter no matter what, like we as individuals who are here experiencing like the text that was written for the Tao, mm -hmm. like need to understand that we give compassion to those who say that Tao is stupid, even though we know yep. Tao is true. They cannot recognize truth and there's nothing wrong with that. And we get to be moderate. We get to live in moderation because we need to be generous, generous with our time and our energy and our, and our ability to be graceful in the face of people who, you know, might say the things that we're thinking are stupid and that's okay. Mm -hmm. And then humility so that we know that we can still learn from and be present with those who are caught in manifestation. Beautiful. Yeah. That is lovely. Thank you so much, Martin John. I love coming up and chatting to you. I love thinking about things in a beautiful way, in a, in a deep way. And it, it's almost like a mega exercise it is. For, my, for my essence. So I yeah. appreciate it massively. Thank you Absolutely. so much. I love you. Thank you. Love you too. Take care, darling. Speak Ciao. soon. Yeah. Oh, that was beautiful. Energy Lady and Truly Julie joining me for some Tao of the day. Uh, we read 52 and 67. It was 15 apart. Uh, or, yeah, 15 apart. Um, 15 from 67 is 82. We don't have 82, so I'm not going to pick that one. We can go 15 down from 52 um, and find ourselves at 37. Could try that and read through that unless someone has a number between 1 and 81 that they want to pick i would love to um i'd love to have a conversation with you so i'm going to read 37 which is inspired action only because it's uh it's 15 apart and there was 15 numbers in between 52 and 67 if i'm doing my math correctly um and i'm going to pick 37 um yeah, that makes sense. So Tao never does anything, yet inspires everything to do. When beings maintain the action of Tao, they spontaneously transform from within. When that, transform, when that transformation acquires a name, external forces inspire actions from desire. Actions without identity are free from external goals. Without desire, Honoring stillness, all things are at peace. There's this uh, aspect of this piece, which I really like. When that transformation acquires a name, Tao inspires transformation, but when you identify with that transformation, you are creating an identity. And that is the name that it acquires. External forces inspire actions from desire. Initially, all of the actions were from Tao. Now, they are, now that you have an identity, there's, there is um, desire. There's desire of holding on to that identity. There's desire of um, you know, making sure that you are actually living in that identity. But actions without identity are free from external goals. Without desires, honoring stillness, all things are at peace. So, I'm going to go through this again. I just want to, again, that was the thing that popped out at me, that, that, that section of just like when transformations acquire, when, a, when that transformation acquires a name, when you can recognize the transformation you're having and associate it with some identity, then you have desires. Tao never does anything. This is the first line. Tao never does anything, yet inspires everything to do. Everything you do is inspired by Tao. When you make that phone call, when you go on that date, when you clean your living room, when you throw out the garbage, all of that is still inspired by Tao, even if you don't think so. Like you are not the uh, master of all of your actions probably any of your actions, although that's really difficult to, to talk about because then we start getting into the conversation of free will. But, you know, everything is guiding you towards something and your learning and, and moving in line with Tao is, you know, a big part of that. 
When beings maintain the action of Tao, they spontaneously transform from within. When you follow your path that is laid out in front of you by Tao, you transform from within. You, you grow from within. It is within you that things start to change and you're not held down by desires and, and ideas and directions of where you want to go and what you think. You're just open to what is. But, and this is, this is, this is, this is like, you are transforming from within, but then your mind can take control and say, when that, tra when that transformation acquires a name, if you don't identify with it, you're cool. But once it acquires a name, external forces inspire actions from desire and you are no longer acting through Tao. You are acting through your desires. Actions without identity are free from external goals. Then you no longer have uh, have to worry about like right like you don't have to worry about external actions because you don't care. It's like you're just you're just acting from from Tao. You're inspired by Tao. Without desires, you honor stillness and all things are at peace. You don't have to be active. You don't have to go out and do things. You don't have to do that. You're perfect as you are, and so you can honor stillness, and all things can stay and remain at peace within you. Thank you so much for joining me for Tao with the Day. If anybody has a number, I'll definitely uh, bring you up. But uh, if not, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. I'm Martin John. I love you guys. Thank you so much. Um, I am just about to start working on my uh, Dow of the Day app. So if you wanted to get a little Dow of the Day on your phone, you'll be able to do that, hopefully, in the new year. Um, but I can always use a little help financially to get that off the ground. If you have, if you like what I do and you benefit from it, consider sending me a tip over on Venmo. You can find me at the arroba or the at symbol, uh, Martin John underscore Garcia. You'll find me there. And I would love to, um, you know, just know that what I'm doing is being valued. Thank you so much, everybody, for uh, supporting me here on Wisdom. And until next time, keep recovering yourself.